live from Munich, Germany, it's theCUBE, covering DataWorks Summit Europe 2017. Brought to you by Hortonworks. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Munich, Germany for DataWorks 2017, the DataWorks Summit, formerly Hadoop Summit. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE, the Cube, my co-host Dave Vellante, wrapping up day two of coverage here with Christoph Schubert, who's the Senior Director of SAP Big Data, handles all the good of market for SAP Big Data, at SAP Big Data is the Twitter handle. You got the great shirt there, go live. Go live, And they have a nice, you, have a, you guys are nice, <laughs> You're, you guys are a part, welcome to the Cube. Thank you, I thanks, appreciate it. Thanks, thanks for, for having joining me. us on, on the wrap up. Yeah. You and I have known each other, uh, we've known each other for a long time. We've been in many sapphires together, and we've had many conversations around you know, the role of data, the role of architecture, the role of how organizations are transforming at the speed of business, which is SAP, is a lot of software that powers business. Under transformation right now, you guys are no stranger to analytics. You have the HANA Cloud Platform we now. We know a thing or two about that, yeah. You know a little <laughs> bit about data and legacy as well. Sure. Um, you guys power pretty much most of the Fortune 100, if not all of them. Um, what's your thoughts on this? Yeah, yeah um, good point um, on the topic of uh, um, some numbers. About 75% of the world GDP runs through SAP systems eventually. So yes, uh, we know a thing or two about um, transactional and analytical systems, definitely. And you guys are a partner with Hortonworks. With Hortonworks and other cloud providers, uh, Hadoop providers, certainly, absolutely, but in this case, Hortonworks, we have specifically um, a solution that runs on Hadoop Spark mm -hmm. and that allows actually our customers to unify much, much larger data sets with a system of records that we you know, do so many of them around the world for new and exciting use cases. And you were born in Munich. This is your hometown. This is actually a home <laughs> gig for me, exactly. So, I, yes, I, unfortunately, I'll also be presenting in English, but yeah, I want to talk you know, German, Bavarian all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I wish we could help you, tonight. but we don't speak Bavarian, <laughs> no. but we do like to drink the beer, though. <laughs> um, it's the fifth season, but a lot of great stuff here right. in Germany. Dave, you guys, I want to get your thoughts on something. I wanted to get you guys, because you're, you're like an analyst, Christoph as well, I know you're a SAP, but you know, you're such great industry expertise, and Dave obviously covers this stuff uh, every day. Um, I just think that the data world is so undervalued in my mind. I think the ecosystem of startups that are coming out in the, out of the open source ecosystems, which are well defined by the way, and getting better, but now you have startups doing things like FinTech, we just had a bank on. Startups creating value and things like blockchain on the horizon, other new paradigms are coming on, is going to change the landscape of how wealth is created and value is created and charged. So no you got a whole new tsunami of change. What's your thoughts on how this expands? And obviously, certainly Hortonworks has a public company and Cloudera is going public, so you're going to start to see that level up in valuation. Yeah, in process, yes. But I still think they're both undervalued. Your thought? Well, it's, it's not just the platform, right? And that's, I think, where Hadoop also came from. Um, the legacy of Hadoop is that you don't have to really think about how you want to use your data. You have to don't think ahead what kind of schema you want to apply and how you want to correlate your data. You can create a large data lake, right? That's the term that was created a long, a long time ago um, that allows customers to just collect all that data and think in the second stage about what to use with it and how to correlate it. And that's exactly now we're also seeing in the third stage to um, not just create analytics, um, but also creating applications instead of analytics or on top of analytics, correlating with data that also drives the business, the core business, from an OLTP perspective or also from an OLAP perspective. I mean, Dave, you are the one who said Amazon's a trillion dollar TAM, yeah, yeah. Uh, trillion dollar, the first will be the first trillion dollar company. Um, and you would kind of, but you looked at the thousand points of life, what cloud enables, all these, if you aggregate it all together, what's your thoughts on valuation of this industry? Because, you know, if Hortonworks continues on this pure play and then got Cloudera coming in, they're doing well, you could argue that they're both undervalued companies if you count the ecosystem. Well, we always knew that big data was going to be a heavy lift, right? And I would agree with what Christoph was saying is that Hadoop was profound in that it was, you know, no schema on right and ship five megabytes of code to a petabyte of, of data, but, but it was hard to get that right. And, and I remember something you said, John, at one of our early SAP Sapphires, when the big data meme was just coming through, you said, you know, SAP is not just big data, it's fast data. And you were talking about bringing transaction and analytic data together. Right. Again, something that has only recently been enabled, and you think about you know, continuous streaming, 
I think that now that big data has sort of entered the young adulthood phase, we're going to start seeing steep part of that S curve returns, and I think I think the hype will be realized. I think it is undervalued, much like the internet was. Mm -hmm. It was overvalued, then mm -hmm. nobody wanted to touch it, and then it became, actually, if you think back to 1999, the internet was undervalued in mm -hmm. terms of what it actually achieved. I think the same yeah. or similar thing is going to happen with big data, and since we have an SAP guest on, I'll say as well, we all remember the early days of, of ERP. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. It wasn't clear no. who was going to emerge as the king. Right, there were a few um, solutions, you're right. That's right, and, and as well, something else we said about big data, it was the practitioners of ERP that made the most money, that created the most value, and the same thing is happening here. Yeah. Um, in fact, um, on, on that topic, I believe that 2017 and 2018 will be the big, deer, big, year, big years for big data, so to speak. Uh -huh. In fact, um, because of some in statistics. In what ways? Well, um, we just did a, a, a Adoption, few statistics. Adoption, S-curves. Right, exactly. Um, utilizing the value of big data. We're talking about valuation here, right? 75% um, of CIOs of the top 1,000 believe that the next three years are more important to the business than the last 50. And so that tells me that they're willing to invest, not just the financial market, who I believe really run the most sophisticated big data analytics and models today. They had real use cases that real, um, uh, with real results very, very quickly. And so they showed many how it's done. They created sort of the, uh, the new role of a data scientist. They have roles like an AML officer. It's a real job. They do nothing else but anti-money laundering, right? So in that industry, they've shown us how to do that, and I think others will follow. Yeah, and I think that when you, when you look at this whole thing about digital transformation, it's all about data. Yeah. I mean, if you're serious about digital transformation, you must become a data-driven company, and you have to hop on that curve. It, even we're talking to the you know, bank today who got on in 2014, which was relatively late, but the pace at which they're advancing is astronomical. Yeah. Um, there's, I don't remember his name, uh, a, a British uh, mathematician uh, created about 11 years already that, uh, that he coined the phrase, data is the new oil. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very true because crude oil in its um, original form, you also can't use it. Has to be refined. You, yeah. Right, exactly. It has to be refined to actually use it and use the value of it. Same thing with data. You have to um, distill it. You have to correlate it. You have to align it. You have to relate it to business transactions so the business really can take advantage of it. And then we're seeing, you know, to your point, we got, I don't know, the list of big data companies that are now in public is is growing. It's still small. Well, not, I, I mean, I just, profit, I mean, I just think, and this is why I like your getting your reaction. I mean, I just think I'm just reading right now some news popping on my dashboard. Uh, Google just released some benchmarks on the TPU, the right. Tensor Processing Unit, basically a chip dedicated to machine learning. Yep. You know, and so you're going to start to see some abstraction layers develop, whether it's a hardened top processor hardware. Uh, you guys have certainly done innovation on the analytics side. We've seen that with some of the specialty apps, just to make it, things go faster. And so more and more action is coming. So I would agree that this S curve is coming, but the game might shift. I mean, this is not an easy, uh, clear path. There's bets being made in big data, and this potential for huge money shift. Well, I of see. Value. See, one of the things I see, and we talked to. Um, uh, uh, Horton works about this, and the new new, uh, new president, you know, betting all on open source. I, I happen to think a a hybrid model is going to win. I think the rich get richer here. SAP, IBM, even Oracle, uh, you know, they can play the open source game and say, hey, we're going to contribute to open source. We're going to participate. We're going to utilize open source, but we're also going to put the imprimatur of our install base, our business model, we our trusted brands behind big so-called big data, we don't really use that term as much anymore. It's the it's the confluence of not only the technology, but the companies who, would you say 75% of the world's transactions run through SAP at some point? Yeah. With companies like SAP behind it and others, that's when this thing, I think, really takes off. But what I think um, a lot of people don't realize, and I've been a customer also for a long time before I joined the vendor side, and what is under-realized is the, the aspect of risk management. Once you have a system and once you have business processes digitized and they run your business, you just you can't introduce um, 
radical changes overnight as quickly anymore as you would like or your business would like. Mm -hmm. So risk management is really very important to, to companies. That's why you see innovation within organizations not necessarily come from the core digitization organization within the enterprise. It, it often happens on the outside within different business units that are closer to the product or to the customer or something like that. There's something else that's happening too that I wanted to address is, 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 is uh, this notion of digitization, which is all about data, allows companies to jump industries. You're seeing it everywhere. You're seeing Amazon getting into content, Apple getting into financial services. You know, there's this premise out there that, that Uber isn't about taxi cabs, it's mm -hmm. about logistics. Yeah. And so you're seeing these born digital, <clears throat> born in the cloud companies now being able to have massive impacts across different <clears throat> industries. Huge disruption creates, you know, great opportunities, in my view. Yeah. So what I, do you I, think? I mean, I just think that the disruption is going to be brutal, and I want to. I'm trying to synthesize what's happening in this show, and you know, you go, you know, squint through all the the announcements mm -hmm. and the products. Really, an upgrade to 2.6 Hadoop data platform, but. Here in Europe, the IOT thing, just to me, mm -hmm. is a catalyst point because it's really a proof point to where the value is mm -hmm. today. And that people can actually look at and say, this is going to have an impact on our business to your digitization point and say, and I think IOT is pulling the big data industry and cloud together. And I think machine learning and things that come over the top on it are only going to make it go faster. And so that intersection point is where, we, where the AI, augmented intelligence is going to come in. I think that's when you're going to start to see real proof points on, it, on value proposition of data. I mean, right now it's all kind of an inner circle game. Oh yeah, got to get the insights, we can optimize this process here and there. And so there's some low hanging fruit, but the big shifting, mind blowing, CEO changing strategies will come from so the bigger moves. To that point, actually, um, two things I want to mention that SAP does in that space specifically, right? Um, startups, right, we have a program actually, SAP.io, uh, that uh, Bill McDermott also recently introduced again, where we invest in startups in this space to help uh, foster um, innovation faster, right? And, and help also connecting that with what's, our existing what's it customers. SAP.io, something to, to, to look out for. And then on the, on the topic of IoT, we made also an announcement at the beginning of the year, Project Leonardo. It's, yeah. a, it's a commitment, it's a solution set, and it's also an investment strategy, right? We're committed um, in this market to invest, to create solutions. We have solutions already in the cloud and also on premise. There are a few companies we also purchased in, in conjunction with uh, Leonardo, our IoT specifically. Um, some of our customers in the, in the manufacturing space, very strong opportunity for IoT, sensor collection, uh, creating SLAs for robotics on the manufacturing floor, for example. We have a complete solution set to make that possible and realize that for our customers. And that's exactly a perfect example where these sensor applications and IoT edge uh, compute uh, rich environments come together also with a core where then uh, system of references like machine parts, for example, matter. Because um, if you manage the SLA for a machine, for example, you just don't want to not only monitor it, you want to also automatically trigger the replacement of a part, for example. And that's, that's where you need an SAP component as well. So, that's in that space we're heavily investing as well. I think the other thing I want to say about IoT is I see it, I mean cloud and big data have totally disrupted the IT business. You, you've seen you know, Dell buying EMC, HPE had to get out of the cloud business, Oracle pivoted to the cloud, SAP obviously going hard after cloud. Very, very disruptive, those two trends. I see IO, IoT as not necessarily disruptive. I see those who have the the install base as adopting IoT and doing very, very well, I think it's maybe disruptive to the economy at large, mm -hmm. but I think existing companies like GE, like Siemens, like Daimler, are going to do very, very well as a result of, of IoT. I mean, to the extent they, they embrace digitization, which they would be crazy not to. All right, guys, final thoughts. What's your walk away from the show? Dave, we'll start with you. Well, as I say, uh, you know, Hadoop is, is definitely not failed, in my mind. I think it's been wildly successful. It is entering this new phase that I call sort of young adulthood. <laughs> um, and, and I think it's, we know it's gone mainstream into the enterprise. Now it's about, okay, how do I really drive the value of data, as we've been discussing, and hit that steep part of the S-curve, which I agree, it's going to be within the next two years, you're going to start to see massive returns. And I think this, 
this industry is going to be realized, look back, as it was undervalued in 2017. Remember how long it took uh, to uh, align on TCP IP? <laughs> <laughs> Years walk away. I, I, I mean, that interoperability was key with TCP IP. It was uh, yeah. one of the things that made right. things happen. I remember token rigging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was great two megabits per second. <laughs> no, but I mean, bringing back that, what's your walk away? Because uh, is it a unification? Opportunity? I mean, is it more yeah. of a ecosystem? A, a good friend of mine, um, also at, at SAP on the West Coast, um, Andreas Walter, he sh shared uh, an observation that he saw in another presentation years ago. It was suits versus hoodies. Different kind of way to run your IT shop, right? Um, top down structured waterfall projects. Um, suits, open source, hack it, quickly done. You know, get in, walk away, make it. Whoa, 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 suits with a waterfall, hoodies was the uh, agile. That's correct. Okay, yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, okay. correct. So yeah. I think that it's not just the technology that's coming together, it's mindsets that are coming together. And I think organizationally for, for, for companies, that's the bigger challenge actually. Because one is very subscribed, change control oriented, risk mm -hmm. management aware. The other is very progressive, innovative, fast, adopters. That these two camps bringing those together, I think that's the real challenge in organizations, mm, not yeah. the technology. And on that, on that topic, uh, we had a lot of very intelligent questions, very good conversations, deep conversations here with the audience at this event here in Munich. Dave, my, my walk away was interesting because I had some preconceived notions coming in. Obviously we were prepared to talk about and because we saw the S1 filed sure. by Cloudera, you see, you're starting to see the level of transparency relative to the business model. One's $4.1 billion in private value, and then Hortonworks pushing almost only $700 million in a public market, which what I would agree with you is undervalued vis-a-vis -vis what's going on. So, obviously, you're going to see, my observation coming from here is that I think uh, there's going to be a haircut for Cloudera. The question is how much value will be chopped down off Cloudera versus how much value of Hortonworks will go up. So the question is, how Cloudera, does Cloudera plummet or does Cloudera get a little bit of a haircut or stay and Horton work rises? Either way, the equilibrium in the industry will be established. The other observation- I think the former and the numbers are ugly. Let's not, let's not sugarcoat it. And so that's got to change in order for this former prediction meaning that we're the making. haircut. Yeah, the haircut's going to happen, uh, I think. And then the, but the numbers well, the, but are really the, ugly. But the, but the question but, is, but, how far does it drop and how much is that as sure. venture, venture arbitrage or just how they were capitalized, well, but, and, but Hortonworth could roll up. But my point is that those numbers have to change and get better in order for our prediction to come true. Okay. So, but in your second thought, sorry to, Interrupt you, but no, no. I, I like the debate. Now I want to know where that line is. We'll be watching. Yeah. But the value in, I think you guys are pointing out that I, I walked away is, IoT is bigger here. I've already said that. Yeah, but definitely. I think the S curve, the S curve is you're right on. I think you're going to start to see real fast uh, product development around incorporating data, whether it's a Hortonworks model, which seems to be the nice uh, unifying partner oriented one, that's going to start seeing specialized hardware that people are going to start building chips for using flash or other things, and, and optimizing doing, hard right? complexities that you pointed out on the intro yesterday, and putting real product value on the table. I think the cards are going to start hitting the table in the ecosystem, and what I'm seeing is that happening now. So I think, I think, I think just an overall healthy ecosystem. Without a doubt. Okay. Right. Any final comments? Let's have a beer. Great had to see you. Munich. <laughs> Munich. We'll have a beer. We had a pig knuckle last night, Dave. We had uh, yeah. some sauerkraut. Yeah, have to have an logisch. <laughs> yeah, we had the Hoskin logos, Dave. Good, we'll have a beer. Thanks. Good, good to be with you again. Thanks to the crew. Thanks for everyone watching. Thanks, the Cube signing off from Munich, Germany for DataWorks 2017. Thanks for watching. See you next time.